right. Welcome back to another Kirby on Sports Podcast exclusive interview exclusively on the Kirby on Sports Podcast YouTube page. These would not be possible without our sponsors, PM Plus Reserve, Shenandoah Primitives, Dr. Dave Leadership Corporation, Mark Francis with Icon Real Estate. We have a very, very special guest for you today. Um, he is one, the only Joey Colby Begovich. He is the vice president of guest experience for the now newly named Washington Commanders. Joey, first and foremost, it's been a while since I've seen you walking around. It looked like you were very busy and I, I just stopped you and I was like, here's my card. And here yeah. we are j- together on a Zoom call, chatting it up. How are you, sir? Uh, I mean... I know this is probably the time of year where it's like transitioning into taking much needed time off after a long football season to getting slowly back into the groove of how are we going to make this fan experience better this upcoming season for the commanders? Uh, Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, Football has an off season as far as like actual playing football, I think on the business side, I mean, it's a year round job, a year round commitment, Um, especially in my role. um, We are constantly, you know, thinking up ideas and pouring over data and um, uh, thinking about how we can remove points of friction in the fan experience at FedEx Field and make sure that people just have the great the greatest time watching our team play um, at FedEx Field. And in addition to that, uh, you know, I I don't think a lot of people realize, but we are also an entertainment venue. So this entire summer, we have big events coming into the stadium. So, you know, we have Coldplay a week from tomorrow performing here. Two weeks after that, we have Monster Jam. We have The Weeknd and Doja Cat coming up. And so we are busy all the time, Um, but that doesn't stop us from making plans for the upcoming season, which we're really excited about. So um, I I sort of want to start off with, uh, I I mean, obviously guest experience. How how did this sort of come about? Like, was it like one day you were like, man, you know, I feel like I'd be really good trying to uh, get people some fun in their lives in guest experience. What sort of led you to this field and being yeah. so successful in it. So uh, I actually, before I worked for the team, I spent 20, over 20 years in the hospitality industry where I had sort of uh, specialized in front of house guest experience. Um, I was almost 15 years with Carnival Cruise Line. And then I spent uh, four or five years um, in the luxury hospitality space with a a company in Denver. Um, And what I was doing there uh, at at both the cruise line and at this luxury hospitality was focused on removing points of friction for front of house um, service operations. So um, whether that meant um, food service or housekeeping or um, entertainment, Um, Those are all the things that I worked on. So I built my entire career around this hospitality focused service lens. Um, And then one day a recruiter called me and said, uh, at the time, have you heard of the Washington football team? And and I said, uh, well, of course, you know, everybody has. And um, they said they're creating this position. They are looking for somebody from the hospitality space. Um, and they want to talk to you. And so I had conversations with um, uh, Jason and other executive leadership and our ownership. And over the course of those conversations over several months, it turned into me moving my family from Denver uh, out to the DMV and uh, taking on the challenge of how do we reinvent and re um, and create frictionless experiences in a stadium environment, looking at it through a hospitality and service lens. So that's what I've really been focused on from like a high level perspective. So um, was there sort of transition between that job and coming to the uh, Washington then football team now commanders? Was there like an adjustment you had to figure out how can I translate what I'm doing there into what you're doing here now? Absolutely. Um, do you, I have to say that the um, principles of service and hospitality are completely transferable to the stadium experience. 
I think what is the was the big adjustment for me is that in the environment of a football game, the fan experience is heavily swayed by either how the team is doing at whatever point of the season or how they're doing in that particular game, which is the largest challenge to overcome. And so I've had to sort of change my thinking, although that the principles of what I know how to do are completely transferable. It's kind of like you have to heighten your ability or um, the strategies in order to enhance guest experience, regardless of what's happening on the field. Because if you focus on that, then you're not focused on the bigger picture, which is being able to consistently deliver this experience no matter what is happening from the football side. And so that has been the biggest change for me that I've had to adjust to. Yeah, I, I would imagine when you were talking about that, like, yes, there is a football game going on um, on the field right now. But when a fan gets up to walk around the concourse, I would imagine stuff like that. That's what your main focus is. Uh, is. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, so my job encompasses basically like everything front of house. So your arrival experience, um, I participate with several different departments, uh, you know, on how we communicate that experience prior to the game. Um, small part of that, um, how you leave the stadium experience, and then everything that you experience in the stadium that is not the football game. So food and beverage. Um, all falls under my purview, um, our premium spaces um, and the service that's provided there fall under my purview. All of the game day staff from your ushers to your ticket takers um, to those that are greeting you around the concourses all fall under my purview. And then a big part of my job is the actual production that surrounds the game day. So the sound, the video board content, all of the entertainment, including the music that happens not only on the field and in the bowl, but around the stadium and our entertainment team. And now coming up this season, the reintroduction of our marching band all falls under my purview as well. And then um, also uh, uh, I support the rest of the organization as the, the events team falls under my purview as well. We do a lot of events on game day for different groups, group sales, um, initiatives or um, special theme games that we have um, to support a lot of our group events. Um, Salute to service in the military comes to mind or our crucial catch game where we support a lot of breast cancer survivors. So my team takes care of all of that. Wow. So this next question, this might be a loaded question. What's, okay. a, uh, what's a typical game day like for Joey Colby Begovich? So a typical game day, uh, I guess you have to start, uh, you have to, let's like roll it back a little bit. So um, we are in the processes right now of planning out what every single game day is going to be. In fact, we are going to oh, announce wow. very soon about themes and giveaways and some key activations that are going to happen around all of our games for this. So event. that's going on now, correct? That's happening now. I yeah. see. Okay. So already planning, um, booking entertainers based on those themes, um, booking experiences based on those themes, deciding what our halftime entertainment is going to be, working with our content team on all of the visuals that are going to happen um, as a part of the game. So all of that's happening now. But leading all up to game day, that week of the game is a lot of work. We have a lot of, every game is different. So we have different vendors and things that come in to activate around the stadium that we're working through. Um, but on game day, um, a one o'clock kickoff, which is the norm for us, I arrived to the stadium at 5.30 a.m. <laughs> Right. Oh. Um, so that is when uh, my day starts. Um, and then I always start my day on game day, making sure that um, all the spaces that are going to have some key activations are either set up or they're in a position where they're going to be set up on that day. Um, we, uh, I review our production notes. We build a document of how we produce game day. It's a uh, a hundred and so pages uh, and I review anything outstanding in there that needs to be taken care of. Um, and then I meet with my core team probably around 630. Uh, we usually have coffee and donuts. 
Um, and then um, I meet any vendors that happen before gates open, um, usually putting out a couple fires uh, along the way with either it be, you know, concessions or food or, or whatnot, or last year we dealt with a lot of staffing shortages because of the pandemic. Um, and then right before gates open, I meet with the production team that all works in the control room and is led by Anthony Fanticola, who um, reports with me right before gates open, all of the rehearsals happen on the field and I'm present for that. And then when gates open, it is showtime. Oh my God. And anything can happen when it's showtime. Um, and so a lot of what I do during the game is I try to be an assistance to anybody who needs me, um, whether that means um, we need more straws in the gold lounge, trying to help coordinate that, or uh, if uh, uh, one of our fans needs assistance, try to help there. Um, so I basically run around. I tracked my steps last season. I was and just I about to ask you that. I average about 14 miles on a game day. Oh my so, God. Yeah. That's insane. That, I, I didn't realize it took that much, but that is very, very interesting. Um, can you touch on some of the things you um, implemented last season in these fan experiences that may or may not be coming back this season? So I think everything that we implemented last year, uh, you know, we were really focused on pregame communication um, for a couple reasons. Uh, you know, the whole league had transitioned to mobile ticketing. And so that was a big change for fans. Um, so we will continue to plus up that sort of communication. We're really focused on the ingress experience, not only from a parking standpoint, but also at the gates. So we are going to continue to focus on that. And we were really focused on um, from the food and beverage side about bringing more local flavors of the DMV. One of my proudest achievements last year was um, our flavors of the DMV showcase that brought in nine local vendors that all have concession stands in the buildings. We're super happy all of them have agreed to come back and be a part of um, this next season. Um, but we're gonna do a little bit more of that this year with some food trucks and some things like that around supporting um, some ancillary areas of the stadium. Um, we had a big focus on our premium spaces and VIP hospitality. We are looking to plus that up again this year. And then a big focus on our in-bowl entertainment. Now we were limited what we could do, um, have on the field last year because of uh, the rules from the NFL Players Association and how many folks we get out in the field. But one of our biggest success stories was um, transitioning our cheer team to a uh, co-ed dance team that features Beach of Feet dancers, which is a, um, a dance style that originated in DC um, to go go music. Uh, we just had auditions last month for our new team. We had hundreds of people come out, um, and we have a brand new team of 44 entertainers that are going to be beyond talented. I, they're fire. I cannot believe the talent we have that on that team. So that will be a plus up. And then we're adding to that as well the marching band, the NFL's oldest marching band in the league coming back in a new format. This season, we are in the pro audition process for that from an um, entertainment standpoint. Um, and what's really exciting this year is um, now that the commander's uh, brand has been announced is that the entire stadium, when fans walk back in this season, will be rebranded to the new name, the new logo, um, and uh, it will really feel, I hope, um, like it used to in FedEx Field, that sense of pride and home field advantage now that we have this forever brand. Well, the game day experience sounds like it's uh, no easy cakewalk for you. It seems like an experienced guy like yourself. It's, it's, it's just, I can't wrap my mind around it. But besides game day, there's other stuff as well that I wanted to get your thoughts on as well. Yeah. Stuff like the parking party and the draft party. I assume that's stuff you headed up as well to plan. Yes. Um, what? What is that like? Is that like an idea that comes onto the table and then like, let's do it? How does stuff like that usually get rolling and then ends up going into production and we have a parking party or a draft party? So 
I, I want to say that although uh, I am accountable for those events, I, I would like to give a shout out publicly to the vast amount of people in several different departments on the team from ticketing to marketing, to our communications team, um, to our operations team that make those crazy ideas come to life. Um, you know, uh, Park and Party is a good example. We were getting ready to launch the brand. Um, we were still in the pandemic, right? Um, and we knew we wanted to do shortly after the announcement, some sort of fan facing event, right? Um, it's February. If we bring fans into the stadium, right, we wouldn't have had a chance to like change out our branding yet and things like that, that didn't seem right. But it seemed right to do something at our home field. And so we started playing with this idea of like, what can we do in the parking lot and what happens in parking lots? And, you know, we're in these ideation meetings and somebody mentions drive in movies. And then we start talking about how we could activate that. And then the, the ideas just build, 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 build. And then, um, you know, we build out the idea, we build the budget, and then we go present it to our senior leadership and our ownership. They gave us the go ahead. And um, that's how that all came about. It ended up being the worst weather possible. I saw that. But one of the most amazing events that I have ever been a part of since my year here at the team, um, because there was such this um, love for the team and to see fans come out on the coldest, wettest day of February and just be out of their cars and celebrate and um, taking pictures and sticking around for the fireworks. It was, uh, I mean, my feet are still cold from that event, but it was it was really magical and not because of the event, Josh, it was magical because of the way that our fans engaged with the event. Um, and so similar to draft party, you know, we know that we're going to have some sort of draft fan engagement activation. And with a core group of people with several different departments, we sort of ideate around how we could bring that to life. And then we come up with the plan, come up with the budget, present it to our senior leadership, and that's how those things um, come about. Um, and similarly, we are working on those plans for training camp right now that we will announce soon as well. So I want to know, because this was a big thing that really interested me at the draft party. I, I, I'm not sure how much involvement you had, but I know you in some way, shape, or form were part of the fan ambassador program, and I'll, I'll get a little bit of thoughts on that as well. But in the draft party, um, just small-time content creators like me and other people, which you know as well, had the opportunity to sit in a tent with um, their setup, and players came around, and they got to interview all these players. I, I mean – that's something big for small content creators like me and other people who are just doing what they love talking about sports. I've been doing this for three years and I've enjoyed every second of this podcast. So what does it mean for the commanders and you to bring in some of these content creators to help them out and give them like these players to interview because there were a lot of players that were gracious enough to go around these tables. I unfortunately couldn't be there, but what, what was that like for you all? So that the, um, the content creators tent was an idea from um, our vice president of communications, Ashley Whitlock. Um, and um, you know, the draft seemed like such a, uh, a great event to be able to show some love to our fans who create all of this fan-driven content around the team. And um, so it was the first time that we had done something on a very smaller scale the year before at the draft party. Um, so this was just the evolution of that and having a more um, dedicated space and also providing the tools of access like the players, the alumni, um, who we provided to come through the tent. Um, and it ended up being very successful. And so I think we'll see a lot more of that um, in the future. 
but this is the way that we operate on the business side now. I can't speak of how it was here before, Josh, but um, what I really love about this team and the team that we have working on the business side of the organization is that we are all integrated. So when you know my colleague Ashley says, here's what my idea is for content creation village, um, uh, uh, a really talented person who reports to me, Victoria Rossi, comes up with a way that we can activate that and then cross-functionally works with Ashley's team to bring it to life. And so we are all intertwined and interconnected over here uh, on, in the front office. And, um, and, and we try to collaborate and work and, and come up with ideas and constantly evolve those year after year, event after event. Um, and I think as the years goes on underneath this brand, um, I hope that resonates to our fans. It seems like it is definitely with our content creators. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, another big thing that the commanders implemented, I believe last season was the fan ambassador program, yeah. um, which I think it's really good getting uh, the fans perspective on what you could or could not do differently. What, what was that like setting that up? Um, and do you think you're going to keep it going for years to come? How has that been working? Yeah, so um, Fan Ambassador Network was started as we knew that we were going to have this rebrand, right? Um, and we knew that there were some areas of focus from the fan experience side that we needed to get a lot of perspective from. On top, top of that, unlike other teams, our fans circumvent this world, right? Obviously, you know, there is a saturation of fans in the DMV, but our fans are all over the place and everybody has a different perspective. We even have content creators that live all over the place and in other countries. Um, and so um, we wanted to get a perspective of a diverse cross-section of fans, fans that were season ticket members, fans that were single, single game buyers, fans that are super fans of the team that never have been to a live game, but are cheering from afar. And how do we bring all of these diverse perspectives together to inform the team, right? Particularly from the fan experience standpoint. So that's why how we stood up the fan ambassador network. Um, and originally when we stood it up, we didn't know how long it was going to last. I think it's here with us to stay. I can't promise that. But the group that we um, enlisted to be fan ambassadors, we are giving, um, keeping them on for another season. You know, there was a lot of things that we couldn't do that we wanted to do last season because of the pandemic, because of the restrictions that we still had. Even though we could have fans in the stadium, we couldn't do all the things that we wanted to do. So we're keeping the same group on. But our goal is in the future that we will give other fans opportunities to be a part of this advisory board. And we use the fan ambassadors all the time. Some recent examples, fan ambassadors just got a look at some new merchandise that we're working on releasing. Fan ambassadors um, worked with uh, members of our marketing team on the Sean Taylor project that we're working on. Um, fan ambassadors um, informed um, some changes that are going to happen with our parking plan. Fan ambassadors are, 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 are being tapped to um, give their opinions and their perspectives on a whole bunch of things. And what's really great is, you know, we can send out a survey to all of our fans, which we do, right? We absolutely do. But then you get that data back, you have to aggregate it. With the fan ambassadors, you can literally just, we have some communication channels for them. We can send out a message, say, hey, can anybody hop on a call this afternoon at this time? And we get a big bunch of them. We present them a bunch of ideas. They give us their feedback and then we take their feedback and we make changes and we pivot and we roll with them. And so they've been absolutely integral to what we're doing on the fan experience side. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I'll give you one last one before we have to, have to let you go. Okay. Um, the name reveal. Um, were you there? If so, how was that day like? Because it was like, it seemed like one big ceremony and a bunch of varsity letter jackets came into play. Those the fancy looking letter jackets, which looked incredible. Um, what was that day like in its entirety? Because a team with such a rich history, um, 
changing from then the Redskins to the t- football team to now the Washington Commanders. Take me through what that day was like. That day was um, that. I mean, I can't even. The day was long. In fact, all leading up to that was long. I mean, I, I I guess I have to put it in perspective this way. Our goal was to saturate as much of the market as possible with the, as many communication avenues as possible. So picture this. On the 50-yard line of, of FedEx Field, we had the national announcement happening with the Today Show. Literally minutes later, we had the local media with this um, name reveal in um, a, in a section of the stadium where they were the ones who got to see the uniforms and the helmets up close for the very first time. And that's when the alumni came out with the letter jackets and things. Right after that, we reopened the team store to reveal new commander's merchandise in a ceremony. Right after that, we let um, a dozen um, uh, uh, skinned cars with our new branding left FedEx Field and went all around Virginia, Maryland and the district to give out brand new commanders um, swag. At the same time, we had digital trucks going to other places around the DMV to to, uh, uh, stop and show our reveal video. Then all of the things happening on social media and the release of all of that content. And then as the sun set on the DMV, we projection mapped our new logo at sites and uh, sites all around uh, the DMV. I mean, we put a lot of effort to making all of those things happen. It, and, you know, it was chaos behind the scenes, but in front of the scenes, um, I'm just so proud of our team for, for pulling all of that off. Um, and then two days later had park and party. <laughs> it was- oh yeah. I can't say that we slept much, but um, it was definitely fun and definitely a um, a career highlight, um, and definitely one of the reasons that attracted me to the commanders and wanting to take this role um, uh, to be a part of something like this. There's not many times in your career where you get to be a part of a rebranding of such an iconic organization. So very excited about that. Once again, this Kirby on Sports podcast exclusive is brought to you by PM Plus Reserve, Shenandoah Primitives, Dr. Dave Leadership Corporation, and Mark Francis with Icon Real Estate. Once again, the vice president of guest experience for the Washington Commanders. He's a busy guy, so if you run into him on game day, he might run you over, but I was one of the (laughs) ones who stopped him to give him one of my cards, and that's why we're doing this interview today. But, Joey, this was a lot of fun. A lot of great insight on what goes into the game day operations for the Washington Commanders. Um, The draft is complete. OTAs are starting and looks like your job might be starting to ramp up just a little bit each and every day. So wish you nothing but the best. And we appreciate your time today, sir. Josh, thank you. And if you do see me on game day, and this goes for all of your listeners, please stop and say hi. I would love to meet each and every one of you. (laughs) for joey i'm josh make sure you check out all of our work at www.kirbyonsports.com until the next time you see us always remember to create greatness we say so long and peace out